Welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You may use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and your microphone are both off so panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions taking place tomorrow. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. Those are my notes. I'm going to turn it over to the main show, which is our presenters. We're going to start today with Augsburg University. Take it away whenever you're ready. Awesome. Hello, everybody. I hope you all can see my presentation. Okay. My name is Shauna Fulford, and I am the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Augsburg University, also one of the first year counselors. Going to spend a little bit of time talking about Augsburg tonight. Keep in mind, this is a very high level overview. So please check out our website or contact us with any further information you may need. All right, so a little bit about Augsburg. Gonna go back here one slide. We are a four year private school located right here in Minneapolis. We're a very small school. We only have about 2,100 students, but we're located right in the heart of South Minneapolis across the street from the University of Minnesota. We're about two blocks either way from the light rail systems, just minutes from downtown in US Bank Stadium. So although we are a very small school, you definitely get the advantages of being in a big city. We are a liberal arts college, so we do offer a ton of different programs. We have about 50 majors and minors on campus. Biology, business, education tend to be some of the largest that we do have, but we also have some really unique programs like bachelors of film, music therapy, bachelors of social work that draw on a lot of students as well. It's okay if you have no idea what you wanna study yet. Benefits of being a liberal arts school is that you really do have that first year, year and a half built in with that kind of buffer zone at Augsburg to really explore and figure out what it is that you do like and you don't like as well. Like I said, we're a pretty small school. We only have about 2,100 students. Average class size is 18. The more specific you get within your major, the smaller those classes are going to be. Um, so we have classes that sometimes only have seven or eight students, depending on your major. Largest classroom only holds 35 students, so nothing ever bigger than that. So once again, we love that we can be small for our students, but you're still able to do some big things because of the location. We're a very small school, but we are a very diverse school. A lot, of, a lot of times when people think about Augsburg nowadays, they think about that diversity piece, which is really important to us as well. So currently we have 53% students of color in our undergraduate population. We're the most diverse private college in the state, arguably the Midwest as well. We were founded as a Lutheran institution, but fast forward today, only about 15% of our students identify with being Lutheran. So as much or as little as that is a part of your college journey, all is welcome at Augsburg. We are also one of the top 30 LGBTQIA plus affirmative and supportive colleges in the country. And we also have a lot of students coming from different um, states, almost every county in Minnesota, about over 44 countries, I believe as well. Um, and we also have students with a lot of neurodiversity as well. So when you think about that diversity piece, it's more than just students of color. Any and all students from any backgrounds, experiences are welcomed and respected at Augsburg. We're also part of a really cool consortium called the ACTC program, Associated Colleges of the Twin Cities. So at Augsburg, being a small school, we can't offer a ton of different programs, but we can work with some of our partner schools and offer even more. So Augsburg works with Hamlin University, University of St. Thomas, McAllister College, and St. Kate's University, and allowing our, our students to take classes at those universities, and their students can take classes at ours. Really opens up the options for students. You're not so limited just to what we offer, but you have a ton of different programs and classes to choose from. No additional fees or anything like that, just more options for our students. Um, a little bit about athletics and fine arts. Augsburg students are very active. They're very engaged. They like to do a lot. Um, that can look different for every student. So we do offer over 60 student clubs and organizations, but then we also have lots of activities within athletics and fine arts. We are division three, part of the MIAC conference here in the state of Minnesota. We have 10 men's varsity sports, 12 women's. We officially added women's varsity wrestling two years ago um, as our 22nd sport. So we're really excited to have that and lots of intramural options as well. If athletics is part of your college journey, 
part of your college choice, definitely reach out to us and we can connect you to the right individuals. And then lots to do within the fine arts, music, speech debate, film, theater programs, um, visual arts programs. That's definitely a huge part of the campus and something you can be involved in. A little bit about the application. I'll keep it really short just to make sure we stay on time. Keep in mind all this information's on the website too. Um, but at Augsburg, we are on rolling admissions. So if any of you are current seniors, you could still apply. For those of you that are juniors, you can apply anytime senior year. You can apply through the Augsburg website. It's free. We also are a member of the common application if you choose to go that route. We accept both applications equally. Built into the application, we have three short answer essay questions. So we're a little bit different in that we don't ask for that standard five paragraph essay. Um, we ask, ask just those three short answer questions to really help us get to know you more. We do a really holistic review. So we see your GPA, we see that information, we wanna get to know you. So that's what those questions are getting to. In addition, we need your official high school transcript. There isn't a magic GPA at Augsburg that's an automatic admit or deny. We're looking once again at every student individually at what your transcript is saying, the type of classes you've been taking, the type of high school that you're at, and really try to paint a picture of who you are. We need one letter of recommendation from a teacher or counselor. That is optional, but if you feel like it will help pad your application, it's something we definitely do wanna see. We have been a test optional school for about three years, but this year and for next year, we have moved to a test free policy, meaning an ACT score or SAT score is no longer a part of the application process. So no need to stress about trying to get out and take it if, um, if COVID is kind of hindering you from, from doing that. Once again, rolling admissions. So once we have all of those pieces, we'll make an admissions decision um, and get you that answer as soon as possible. I'm gonna skip information about scholarships, but just know even though we are a private school, there are a ton of scholarships, 100% of students receive them, 98% overall receive financial aid. So we're gonna do everything we can to make sure that you, um, that Augsburg can be a financial fit for you. Feel free to take a quick screenshot of this if you'd like. We have lots of virtual tours, in-person tours, and you can always contact me for more information as well. So thank you for your time today. Great, thank you so much, Augsburg University. We are going to hear now from Colorado University, whenever you're ready. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Mitch. I'm from Colorado Mission University. Um, got that going for you. Uh, yeah, so we'll kind of get quick and going for you. Colorado Mission University, we are a Division II college. Here we have about 11,000 students, um, kind of varying anywhere from 35 different countries, um, 47 different states. So definitely growing in the diverse culture with that as well. Um, we are actually located about four hours um, west of Denver and about four hours east of Salt Lake City. So kind of right on the border of Colorado. Um, we do have a 114 different majors kind of varying anywhere from all the way from certificates up to doctoral level classes. Um, kind of going back into our personalized attention, like so we are kind of a, that nice sweet spot in between, not super small, not too big. 88% um, of our classes do have less than 40 students. So pretty unique. Once you get to that level, you get that kind of one-on-one -on -one aspect. Um, as well as zero teaching assistance. So from the very start to the very end, you will be taught by the professor as well. Um, right here is definitely kind of a nice little representation kind of view of uh, some of our bigger programs of study. As you can see, I would say our biggest one would be business, um, engineering, kinesiology, and then as well as our health science. Um, engineering is actually one of our biggest ones. We're partner schooled with CU Boulder. So you could actually come to CMU Mesa um, all four years. And then by the time you graduate, you'll actually get a CU Boulder degree. Um, health science is another big one. We're actually one of the top ranking um, nursing uh, programs in Colorado, very unique. Uh, we actually just bought the brand new facility across the street for us and uh, have renovated it, kind of made it state of the art. So another one of our big programs as well. Um, applied learning. So kind of going back to that same spot, um, since we are a smaller school, we do like that hands-on, the clinicals, internships, um, undergrad research. So we truly want you to be doing that as soon as your freshman year. So uh, from my own experience, I was an exercise science major. As you can see in that picture on the bottom right, I was in the human performance lab, literally from my freshman year all the way to my senior year. So uh, definitely wanna do what we can with, like I said, getting you in there, getting that hands-on experience as soon as possible. 
um, here in Grand Junction. If you haven't been here or been to Colorado, really, um, a lot of sunshine. Um, we like to kind of say you could throw a stone in any direction and find something to do. So we have hiking, kayaking, fishing, snowboarding, skiing, if that's something you're into. So kind of like I said, in a very unique spot that we're not too, uh, not too far away from Utah, where you can still go have a good time, but we're still in Colorado as well. So a lot of uh, outdoors and stuff to do here. Um, with that, um, the people make the place. So out of those 11,000 students we have, about 2,500 of them actually live on campus. Um, we have 190 clubs and organizations, 2,000 student run events. So there's a lot going on. Um, like I said, kind of anything you could find or anything you're very interested in, we most likely have it. Um, and then we also do have a study abroad program, which and, you know, is a little weird this year with COVID, but that's definitely an option as well for us too. Um, here at uh, in, uh, CMU, we actually have 26 NCAA Division II sports. So if that's something you are interested in, um, we have up to about actually 750 varsity athletes, um, very competitive. We take a lot of pride in our sports as well. Um, and then kind of below that as well, we have our club sports, which are still going to do the same thing. If you want to stay involved, you still travel, you still get gear, um, still kind of get the whole nine yards, just not as uh, intensive. And then as well as our intramural sport league. So same thing, um, very competitive, 3,000 students participate in that. So there's going to be tournaments, trophies, the whole nine yards. All right, so same thing. We're going to give you every single thing we could offer to you as well. We're going to give you the faculty advising, our peer tutoring, which is actually our free tutoring system um, we have on campus. So as a student, you can go down there any time of the week, um, get free tutoring. So pretty nice. Um, career service, educational access. Um, we do want to give you every resource and tool we can. So while you're here, we understand, you know, leaving home possibly, especially if you are from uh, Minnesota, this is going to give you all the resources we can for you. Um, here at CMU, this is one of the biggest ones. We do have the third lowest tuition fees among four-year colleges in Colorado. So we want to do what we can to definitely make it obtainable. Um, we understand leaving home. So Every year we have given out about $79 million in the financial aid awarded. And then we have a lot of different kind of merit scholarships, first time, first gen, a bunch of different opportunities to the same thing. Like I said, make it obtainable, make it doable for you as well. Uh, this is kind of be one of the biggest ones. Um, I really like, especially like I said, we are in Colorado. We do have a discounted tuition and fees rate for out-of-state students. So the far left is gonna be a Colorado one. The far right, if you look in that column is out-of-state, that middle one is actually gonna be our Wooly Mountains and Plains. Um, and Minnesota falls into that. So it is a great uh, discounted tuition rate to do what we can to make it. So, you know, going out of state may not be uh, an arm in the leg, make it obtainable, make it doable for you as well, for sure. So um, that would be one of the biggest ones, like I said, we do have to offer as well. Merit scholarships. Um, we'll go too much into details on if you want to take a screenshot or whatever, but just some scholarships we have that will be uh, offered to you coming out of state, um, just what your high school GPA, class rank, et cetera, is going to be. So. Just kind of give you a nice little representation of that right there. As well as like I said, we're going to do what we can to make it obtainable. Um, our first generation scholarship um, definitely is going to be about $1,000 per year, legacy scholarship. So there's a lot of different opportunities um, offered here at Colorado Mason University. Um, but like I said, we want to do what we can to definitely make it hands-on, be a part of it, um, and a lot of different programs that we offer as well too. Um, same thing, kind of going back to if you have not applied, um, like they were saying in the last one, we actually have gone test optional this year as well. We understand with COVID going on, you know, there's a lot going on. Um, not needed. What we really need right now is official transcripts. We are rolling admissions. So if you have not applied, that's still an opportunity still available for you. Um, like I said, the results are SAT, ACT are optional, but we also have our optional essays and letter of recommendation. So same thing, if you kind of just want that little extra limb up, that's going to show what makes you stand out compared to, you know, someone else we're gonna have that option as well. So a lot of different options as well for that. Pretty much our admissions counselors, feel free to reach out to us. And yeah, like I said, if you have any more information, you guys could scan those little barcodes, get a little more, go to our website, applications as well too. But thank you everyone for your time, I appreciate it. Great, thank you so much, Colorado Mesa University. We are going to head now to Kansas State University. Take it away. Good evening, everybody. My name is Kelsey Corgan, and I'm an admissions representative with Kansas State University. Um, I'm a recent grad from K-State this past May, and now I get to work with students like you guys through your college search process um, and kind of be your go-to person. And I'm joined today with my colleague, Courtney, who's gonna be answering any chat questions that you guys have. 
So if you have any during the presentation, um, she'll be there for you guys. And we're excited to share a little bit more information about K-State with you guys today. Um, so hopefully this is a good introduction, or if you've heard of K-State, you can learn just a little bit more. First and foremost, K-State is a Division I four-year public university located in Manhattan, Kansas. We're definitely a college town, so if that's something you're looking for in your college experience, our campus and their surrounding community are really tightly connected. You'll see purple almost everywhere you go. Um, we have students from all 50 states, over 100 countries that come to Manhattan um, they, to have that K-State experience. Um, and we are actually the number one choice for high school graduating seniors in the state of Kansas. Um, so it's just a great place to kind of meet new people that have all different backgrounds as well. We are primary, primarily a research institution, so students have tons of undergraduate research um, opportunities and faculty membership uh, mentorships as well. We do emphasize hands-on learning throughout all of our different academic programs. Overall, K-State is just a great place to be, as you can see from these Princeton Review rankings, that students really enjoy their experience on campus and continue to have pride in K-State even after their graduation. So talking a little bit more about academics, um, K-State is made up of nine academic colleges offering a variety of degree programs. And with over 250 majors in programs, um, we have more program offerings than any other school in the Big 12. And there's a lot of different options to choose from that just means that K-State can have something for everybody and you can really customize your academic degree plan. Whether it's business, architecture, engineering, um, many of our programs are ranked at the top of their fields, both regionally and nationally, so you know that you're getting a quality education in your time here as well. We also offer over 50 minors and a number of pre-professional programs, so you can really customize your academic experience. Um, and if you do go into one of our pre-professional programs, um, you get paired with an academic major, and then you get dual advising um, to make sure that you're meeting all of K-State specific requirements, but that you're also gonna be successful um, after you graduate from K-State in that sense as well, um, whatever that entails. Not only are K-Staters involved in the classroom, but they're doing a lot around campus and the Manhattan community and across the globe as well. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we do have undergraduate research available for students on campus. Um, and many of our students study abroad in over 85 different countries, which is a great way to kind of gain that global global perspective while you're in college. Um, however, if that's not your cup of tea, students are also leaving an impact on our campus here in Manhattan and any of our 500 clubs and organizations that we have to offer. Um, we have anything from getting involved within your academic area. Um, we have a Harry Potter club, skydiving, anything in between. Um, so there's always something um, to kind of get involved in outside of the classroom as well, whether it's Greek life. And then, like I said, as well, um, we are ranked number four for best town school relationship. So there's lots of purple here in Manhattan. So we'll take just a little bit to talk about the application process. So K-State did move to a test optional format for um, admission. So if you meet one of, one of these three requirements, you'll automatically be admitted into the university. So it's a 3.25 GPA, um, and we do look at weighted or unweighted. 21 on your ACT and we super score or a 1060 on your SAT. You can either apply through our K-State Direct website or we are on the Common app as well. Um, if you're applying to a couple of other schools, um, that's an option. We don't require any essays or a lot of recommendations. So the application is relatively quick and painless. Um, and even if you don't quite meet our admissions requirements, we still encourage students to apply um, and we can go through a reconsideration process to get you admitted in that way as well. Looking at some of the scholarships that students are eligible for um, once they come to K-State, there's no separate application for our general university-wide scholarships. So if you're a current senior, you still have time to submit your application for admission by March 15th. Um, if you meet an ACT and GPA requirement, we also have some test optional scholarships available as well. Um, for my juniors, some of these dates will change coming um, this fall. So if you just stay connected with K-State, we'll let you know some of these deadlines that will come up um, during your senior year for scholarships and things like that. Like I said, this year due to COVID, we were able to offer some test optional scholarship applications to students where we look deeper at their extracurricular activities, leadership, job experience, and all of that for scholarship consideration, um, which we continue to um, continue to want to do that in the fall. But like I said, more information for my juniors of what that will look like. And then we also have the K-State Scholarship Network or KSN, which is essentially all of the other miscellaneous scholarships that you'll receive from the university, whether it's through your academic department, um, alumni association, foundation, um, anything that you might be eligible for, um, you apply through that application. 
So that sums up a bulk of the general information for K-State. And I know you're learning a lot of, um, from different schools today. So I encourage you to get connected with um, K-State in any way, shape or form. Each of you has a specific admissions representative based on where you live um, to get connected and make sure that um, you're getting all of the information from K-State that you need. We are offering both on-campus and virtual visit opportunities for students to learn more about the university and meet with someone in their specific um, academic area of interest and to tour campus. So if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to myself, um, or you can find your admissions representative um, at this link on the screen here. Thank you guys for your time this evening, um, and we look forward to connecting soon. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kansas State University. We're going to hear now from North Dakota State University. I also want to remind everyone that the Q&A function is open and we're happy to receive your questions for any of our panelists at any time. Take it away, NDSU. All right, had to find my unmute button. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Matt Henry and I'm one of the admission counselors for North Dakota State University. Um, I'm here just to talk really quickly about some of the general information you should know if you're considering us as an option. Um, right away, um, here we go here. Um, right away, if you don't really know who we are, we are a four-year D1 public university located in Fargo, North Dakota. We have about 13,000 students on our campus, so we kind of sit in that mid-size range of college. Um, I always like to say that um, you get a lot of the benefits of a big school, you get those big campus events, the big athletic games, um, but you don't necessarily feel that when you're on campus in a day-to-day -day experience, so I think that's something that's kind of nice. Now, of course, if you're looking at us, the first thing you're probably looking for is academics. We have 100 different majors at NDSU across seven different academic colleges. Some popular options include engineering, uh, nursing, business, pharmacy, and architecture. But of course, there's a quite a big variety of different things that you could choose to study here. Um, I was a student at NDSU. I graduated back in 2017 with a degree in strategic communication. So you can find a lot of different options that are gonna be suited for what you're interested in. One thing that I think really helps us is even though we do have 13,000 students, we do have a 16 to one student to faculty ratio. So what that means is for you, most times your classes are gonna be 40 students or less. We do have some larger lecture halls, but for the most part, we try and keep you in that smaller classroom experience to promote hands-on learning, of course, which we think is super vital for a good college education. Now, there's a lot of things that are gonna really play a factor in your college experience, but I think something that's really important is getting involved in student life. At NDSU, we have about 300 different clubs and organizations that you can choose to be involved in. Um, yep, sorry, I just wanna make sure things are good. Um, so um, you have about 300 different clubs and organizations that you can choose to be involved in. Um, there's gonna be quite a wide variety here. So there's going to be some clubs that are focused on your major and what you're studying, some on career goals and what you may want to try and uh, become in the future. There's also gonna be ones that are based on hobbies or interest areas, religious organizations, multicultural organizations, LGBTQ plus organizations. Um, really, there's a quite a big variety of different things that you can choose to do. I would definitely recommend getting involved in one or two clubs if you choose to come to NDSU or really any of the colleges that are here today. Now, something else that I do think is really important and something that's pretty cool as an NDSU student is tickets to on-campus events are actually included in your student fees. So all the on-campus athletic events during the regular home season are things that you've already paid for when you're coming to NDSU. So if you wanna go see a football game, which is definitely something that our NDSU students like to do, that's something you can do just by reserving a ticket ahead of the game. Um, we also do have a wellness center and that's something that's located um, on the west side of our campus. It's open seven days a week and that's something that's also included in your student fees. So keep that in mind when you're looking at colleges, you know, what's included in the student fees. I think we have a lot to offer here, but you know, definitely just make sure that you're going to be utilizing all the different things that each, ca each campus has to offer. Now, something that I think is a really big selling point for NDSU is the Fargo-Moorhead community and the location. Um, NDSU is located in Fargo-Moorhead, which is um, basically a combined two city area. So Fargo, North Dakota, uh, Moorhead, Minnesota. The population of the area is about 240,000 people. There's actually about 30,000 college students within the area with about 13,000 being from NDSU. There's plenty of different things to do, um, whether it's heading downtown to explore the different shops and restaurants. Um, side note, Fargo is a really big foodie location. So if you like restaurants, there's plenty of different things to go explore, um, plenty of different outdoor events to do um, year round, not just in the summer months and the spring months when it's nice out, but also things to do in the winter and different events around the downtown area, um, but also um, different parks, trails, um, recreation near the Red River. 
And then something else that I think is really important about the Fargo-Moorhead community is the job market. Uh, we recently named one of the hottest job markets in the US, specifically the hottest job market in the US by ZipRecruiter back in 2020. Um, so this is something that's really good, you know, whether or not you're planning on staying in the Fargo-Moorhead community after your college experience, um, it's really gonna help set you up for success, um, you know, just immediately after and then also down the road in the future. Now, a couple quick details about the process here. Um, for the admission process, the application is actually pretty straightforward. You apply on our website at ndsu.edu slash apply. Um, for seniors who are here today, you can apply right now. Um, the admission guidelines are pretty straightforward. We look for a 2.75 high school GPA. We look for 14 core courses, and we do not have an ACT or SAT requirement and no application fee. There's also no essay. And if you do want to um, apply to NDSU, but you're not quite meeting one of these guidelines, that's okay, we still do encourage it. At that point, you would wanna talk with your admission counselor and we'd probably advise you on if there's any additional materials that we think could help your, admit, uh, your application chances. Now, the next thing to talk about will be costs. And for Minnesota students, a 2020 to 2021 cost sat at about $20,079 for the year. Um, now, these are gonna vary year to year, but that's kind of what we sat at. The Minnesota tuition and fees, sit at about 11,201. The housing and the meal plan sit at about $8,900. With that, I think I do wanna talk about scholarships too. And I do just wanna note that these are the scholarships for this year. Um, we determine these year by year. They kind of sit pretty similar each year, but we did have to make some changes just due to COVID and students not having ACT or SAT scores. So we have two different ways to award our guaranteed scholarships. If a student has a 3.5 GPA or higher and a 25 on their ACT, they're gonna automatically receive a scholarship at NDSU, assuming they're admitted by February 1st of their senior year. And this year we did have the option for students who didn't have an ACT or SAT score to submit with a 3.5 or excuse me, 3.65 uh, GPA or higher if they were admitted um, by February 1st with this GPA, they would automatically receive one of these scholarships here. And if you want, you can screenshot this. It could change a little bit year to year, but this is kind of what we've sat at for a while. Um, we just added that cumulative high school GPA um, option this year. All right, and so what's next? If you are interested in NDSU, I think the next step would be signing up for a virtual visit or an on-campus tour, which we're currently offering. And then when it's your senior year, you'll wanna make sure to apply to NDSU, which I mentioned, it is free to apply. The last thing too, I just want to give you my contact information. Um, so again, my name is Matt Henry. I'm one of the admission counselors in the Western Twin Cities. You can reach me at that phone number or that email address below. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, North Dakota State University. We are going to hear now from University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. Beautiful, thank you, Jeannie. Uh, give me one quick second here. Alrighty, so thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is John Kleba, he, him. And I'm an admissions counselor here at the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. Um, for those of you who may not know, you're right next to us. Hopefully you've at least heard of the UW system, if nothing else. We're smack dab in the middle of the state of Wisconsin. I think Stevens Point, I think Pittsville is technically the center, but Stevens Point is close enough, so we'll call it even. But we have around 7,300 students. We're around right in that mid-size range. I would call it, um, you know, small enough that you can get to know folks, but it's big enough too that there's a lot of things to do, both on campus and in the community. Um, like I said, we're right in central Wisconsin. Athletics-wise, we're a D3 institution. We've got about 21 different varsity sports, um, a handful of club sports, around 35. And for intramurals, around 20 or so. For those who might not know, intramural club varsity, um, that's just kind of different levels of competitiveness when you get into college athletics. As far as academics go, over 120 different undergraduate programs uh, spread out through five academic colleges. This kind of threw me off at first when I was applying for schools. When you talk about colleges within a university, that's just kind of how you categorize majors. Um, that confused me for a long time. So hopefully you already knew that. I certainly did not. As far as prominent majors, natural resources is definitely something we've been known for for a very long time, sort of our flagship programs. We've got a bunch of other neat stuff too. Business is a big program here. Um, I always like to shout out the English department because we have the Cornerstone Press, which is actually our student-run publishing house. It's one of four in the country, and it's a, a really neat opportunity to see that process of publishing from beginning to end. Uh, health sciences are huge. There's a bunch of clinics in the area. Um, whatever realm you want to get into, nursing, physical therapy, um, actually pre-med stuff, um, all that kind of, all those vibes as well. 
And finally, the arts. We actually are one of 30 institutions in the whole country that has full national accreditation in art, music, dance, and theater, all four of those together. And that's huge. I think that's a really neat thing that we're able to provide. And so here's the thing with today, is that six minutes is not a lot of time to talk about a university. So much like uh, my colleagues here, I'd really encourage you to jump on our website to find um, all the facts and the details about our programs and create specific majors you want to dive into. But I want to talk about a few of the things that I think really set us apart as a university. And the first one, if you look at this background here, discover your purpose. This is, this is our brand. This is how we approach education. This is how we approach higher ed in general. And I think, while it's nice, I like discover your purpose as a tagline. It's a little bit vague, so I like to break it down a little bit. I think about it as, think about like Venn diagram. On one, you've got your two circles overlapping. One circle is your passions and your interests. And the other one is your skills, the skills you already have or that you're hoping to acquire. That intersection in the middle is kind of the gateway to discovering your purpose. Now, obviously, that's a very individualized thing. That's not something that we can tell you the answer to. It's something you have to figure out for yourself. But our job as a university is to help you, you know, is help facilitate that, that, that journey for you and provide the support, provide the resources to help you get to that point. So whichever of the over 120 different programs you decide aligns best with your professional purpose, and purpose can be more holistic than that as well, it's our job to help you figure out how to get there. And I think there's two, two different themes about point that make us one of the best places to discover your purpose. The first one is this big major focus on hands-on experiences. Now, across all of our majors, we really do make it a point to not just sit in the theoretical. We want to make sure that obviously theory is important. We want you to be able to, you know, write a paper, take a test, all that kind of stuff. But at some point, you have to bring the theoretical into the practical and bring it into the hands-on realm. And that's huge for us. I think it's important for a couple of different reasons. One, for employers, that's what they're looking for. That's what's huge is people want to see that you can actually be competent in the workplace. It's great if you can write an excellent paper, but if you can take those concepts and skills and actually apply it into a professional setting, that's even more significant. You get that through research. You get that through internships, through problem solving in the classroom. All those different areas are critical to your education. We try to provide that. The second reason it's important is that, I mean, frankly, that's where our students are passionate about. That's where your interests lie, is doing the actual work, not sitting in the classroom for four years and, um, you know, wrangling with the theory the whole time. Our students actually want to do something with it. And so for those reasons, we really try to incorporate hands-on experiences throughout our culture as our university and throughout all our different programs. The, th the second thing that really that really helps us to stand out is this focus on community value. I'll break that down a little bit. So when I think about different schools, different colleges, I think about value. I think there's three types of value. There's academic, there's financial, and there's community value. And that community value piece sometimes gets forgotten because I mean, college is a big investment. It's a lot of money, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort. But that community value piece is something we do really well, along with the other two, I'll say. And it's something you really should look for whatever your school is you end up at, you want to make sure you feel that connection. You want to feel incorporated in that culture. And that's what kind of brought me into Stevens Point. I grew up in Coon Rapids, just north of Minneapolis. And I didn't know about coming to central Wisconsin, a smaller area, but that culture really just brought me in. And I learned all the different things I loved about the city. You can go rural, you can go the downtown square, or you can go suburban, whatever it is you want to do, the community has that. And the attention from faculty, from peers, from staff, that's really what makes the experience. Um, but yeah, I guess to sum it all up together is you really should try to come and visit. Um, I Give me one quick second. I want to pull up our visit site here real quick. There's a ton of different visit opportunities. We've been doing in-person on-campus visits since June. Um, and it's been great. We have, you can come on a daily visit. You can come on a Saturday visit. We've got our virtual piece as well. But if you can come on campus and actually see us, um, I really think that's the best experience. If you have a chance to pop in the site, this first impressions piece can give you a list of all the statistics and all the quick hits numbers. But more than anything, I'd really like you to just come see us. So thank you all so much for coming to this and I yield, I suppose. Thank you so much, University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point.
We are going to close out the presentation portion of our event today by hearing from Verito Education. Go ahead and take it away whenever you're ready. Thanks, Jeannie. Appreciate that. Um, and thank everybody who's still with us. I know it's, uh, it's fun being on Zoom all day. Raise your hand if you have Zoom fatigue. Um, I totally do. I'm going to assume you're all raising your hands too and just cheering me on. Um, one second while I share my screen. Okay. So hopefully this ends our session with a little bit um, um, of energy. If you're a student out there who's ever wanted to travel the world, if you're a student who's um, thinking about a four-year degree after high school, uh, we can help with both things. Um, I, you know, the reason Verto exists is to help students see the world and, and understand new cultures. And um, that's it's such a great way to learn. I've spent my career working with students um, in places like India and Tanzania and about 12 other countries in Asia. And I've seen it so many times where students have these light bulb moments. So we want students to be able to start college with a semester abroad. Um, so if travel is important to you or exciting to you, then um, let's, uh, let's go through Verto. So, oops, this is the wrong slideshow. Sorry, I have too many slideshows up. One second. And it is this one. Clearly, I came prepared. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what students typically do with Verto is they'll spend their first semester of college traveling or their first full freshman year. Um, we're gonna talk about the different ways that students can use Verto, but again, just keep in mind if you've, if you've ever wanted to see the world, um, this, this is a great way to do it. Um, we've got different semesters you can choose from and I'll quickly breeze through those. Um, we've got three semesters in Europe to start college in or three semesters out in the field, depending on your learning style, what you're looking to do, the se uh, semesters have different experiences. So in London, for example, you're gonna be studying things like business and politics and history. Um, in Milan and Italy, you're gonna be looking at philosophy and art and history. These credits are all gonna count as gen eds. Um, so even if you're traveling to Italy with Verto, you don't need to be a philosophy major or an art history major. You can still travel with us and know it's going to count towards your core first year classes. And also you're in Italy, so you can't go wrong. Carbs, beautiful architecture. It's incredible. Um, I'm going to skip these videos for now. Madrid in Spain is another option. This is a great semester. If you're not sure what you'd like to major in, you're taking everything from... Um, history to anthropology, to um, the Spanish language. Sorry, move on here. Field semesters are different options. You'll earn the same amount of credits, but you'll never set foot in a classroom. Hawaii, um, I, could go, I could go on for hours about these field semesters, but basically the way they work is that each course you take corresponds with specific locations. So in Hawaii, you're gonna start in the Big Island, you'll end on Oahu, and you'll take these courses here. You'll never set foot in a traditional four-walled classroom. You'll be traveling with your group and professors and doing things every day, connecting with local NGOs, doing community visits, ethnographic studies, just depends on the typical, on the specific day. Um, but that's, that's a typical kind of um, schedule, I guess, if you wanna call it that with Verto. On field semesters, we don't stay in dorm rooms, we stay in base houses. So this is our base house in Kona on the Big Island in Hawaii. We've got an option in Costa Rica where you're studying development, um, Latin American history, environmental sciences. This is a really cool uh, semester and a really cool curriculum. Um, if you're a language buff and you'd like to learn Spanish, this is the best way to do it. You're gonna walk out fluent for sure. Um, on every semester, we, we do things that are not just related to academics. We're gonna do whitewater rafting in Costa Rica. Um, even in Europe, we're gonna take students to like Stonehenge if you're in London. So all that stuff's built in too. So you get to experience all the countries you're in. This is a typical classroom in um, on a field semester, if you wanna call it that. So this would be out after a day out in the field. That's Matt Yam from LA, he's awesome. Here's our base house in Costa Rica, some shots from there. Lots to do and see. Um, we also have an option in the South Pacific where students are in Fiji, New Zealand, and Australia. So three countries, they'll split time between these three, spend a month in each and dive deep into things like anthropology. So in Fiji, for example, you study cultural anthropology. You get to live in this highland village and do things like community surveys and studies with these groups that you just would never know existed. Um, so this is a really, really cool, all encompassing semester. And um, 
I don't have to tell you guys, but there's a lot to do and see in these three countries. In Fiji, again, in particular, we do a lot of island hopping and you get to experience some cultures and just places that you might not even know existed, um, which is cool. One of these islands actually has the last living female chief in the country and our students get to go and visit and do a kava ceremony, which is a big part of their culture. Um, so those are the different semester options. Students can choose to start college at with Verto. Um, we also partner with about 56 universities across the country. Um, one of the, the reasons we also exist is to help students get into college. So we've got these partner schools you can apply to through the Verto application. Kind of think about it like the Common App. Um, when you apply to Verto, your application is also simultaneously applying to our partner colleges. So you can let us know what schools you'd like to apply to. Again, there's 56 that are spread out across the country. Um, lots of, of advantages to apply to college through Verto. It gives you a higher shot getting in. Our partners really value students who travel. Um, you're likely going to save a lot on tuition because our semester is much more affordable than a, a typical college um, semester. Your credits are going to transfer seamlessly, and you're going to be transferring in with other Verto students who are just, have just been on this incredible experience with you. So lots of benefits there. If you're a student who doesn't want to apply to one of our partner colleges, let us know. We'll help you transfer the credits to a non-partner school. We do that all the time for students. Um, we've also got a transfer guarantee. So if you apply to Verto and you're accepted into our, our Verto program, you're guaranteed admission to 27 of our 56 partner colleges who have all basically said, we, we love Verto students so much. And we want students who have traveled so much that if you guys accept anybody, they're good to go on our campus as long as they hold a certain GPA on the Verto semester. So if you're looking for options, here's 27 admission decisions for you in your back pocket. Um, so lots of ways that you can use Verto and I'm getting the wrap it up signal. So. Uh, reach out and I hope to hear from you guys soon. Thanks. Oh, thank you so much, Verto Education. Uh, and great job to all of our panelists. It is not easy to share all of this important information about their organizations in a short six minutes. Uh, so thank you so much for accepting that challenge. We are now going to move on briefly to a Q&A portion. So I'll ask all of our panelists to join me on video here. I'm going to share my screen and ask our panelists the question, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We're gonna go ahead and go in the same order that we did our presentations in. So I'm gonna start with Augsburg University whenever you are ready. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think my advice would be to use us, use us, um, the counselors at whatever school you're looking at. I think so many times students are afraid that they're bothering us or they're bugging us or they're afraid their question is it big enough or is it dumb? And it's not, ask, ask, ask. That's what we're there for. We are there to answer any questions and to help guide you through this process, whether it's to get to our institution or get to an institution that's a better fit. So call, email, text, that is literally what we're here for. Do not be afraid to, to reach out to the admissions counselors. Fantastic, thank you so much. Colorado Mesa University. Yeah, uh, that was a great one. Um, I would definitely say go visit, um, especially with everyone, like they all said, in-person visit tours now. Um, don't make a rash decision by not going. Um, take advantage of it. Go see. Um, get, get that experience for sure. Okay, thank you. Kansas State University, what's your advice? My advice is to ask all of those silly questions or dumb questions that you might think they are. Um, all of us were in your shoes once going through that college search process. So we're here to help you. And we we had those same questions when we were going through the college uh, search and decision process. Um, so no question is too little or too silly to be asked. Yeah, absolutely. I love when I see all of our panelists nodding in agreement uh, with the advice. It's great. Uh, next, I will go to North Dakota State University. Yeah, I think my advice would be, you know, obviously take this decision seriously and ask all these questions that we've been talking about. But at the same time, don't overly, you know, stress about this. There are decisions that you're making here that are not permanent. You can change your mind later on. You can transfer to a different school. You can switch your major. So as scary as this all is, just keep in mind, you know, this isn't a permanent thing. You can, you know, have the luxury of kind of looking around, but then, you know, change your mind in the future. So don't stress too much. Perfect, thank you. University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. Yeah, I guess I would say come in with a plan, whether it's a visit or a college fair or a virtual presentation, think about like one to three things that you really wanna hear about. 
um, try to zone in on things. So I think it's easy to get caught in the flood of information, especially at college fairs. If you ever go to an in-person college fair, there's like 120 different tables and you, you can get lost in that. If you have some goals in mind, that makes it a lot easier, more digestible. Great advice, thank you. And then we will have Verto Education close us out with this question. I like, can I steal everybody's? I like what everybody said. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think I'll say that, um, well, I'll say this, I had a Spanish teacher once who said, this Spanish quiz you're about to take is a grain of sand on the beach of life. And I feel that about things that, that students are, have anxiety about. So if a, tip, a specific type of experience is calling to you guys and your gut's telling you to go for it, then go for it. And all the nitty gritty stuff's gonna work itself out. I promise you. So that would be what I would say. Great. Well, thank you so much. We are so fortunate to have such an expert panel here today sharing their tips after helping, you know, literally thousands of students make their dreams come true already. I've got one more screen share to say, uh, to share before we wrap up here. Um, and I want to really thank not only our panelists, but everyone who joined us today. So thank you to those who are here on the call, but also to those who are catching the recording. We hope you enjoyed tonight's session. Uh, this is just one of many sessions. We have a whole another night tomorrow. And so we hope that you will take a look and see if there's any sessions there that look of interest. And then in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day.